Hello, I am Kara Jones. I am a teacher in second grade and I am going to read to you Mrs. McBloon, Clean Up Your Classroom by Kelly DiPuccio. It's a fact that nearly every school from Kennebunkport, Maine to Chickaloon, Alaska has one teacher whose classroom is a sorry jumbled up mess. Knickerbocker Elementary in the pint-sized town of Up Yonder was no exception. Mrs. McBloom in Room 5 had a classroom that would impress even the most clutter-loving junkyard dog. It was a heap of mess on account of her never cleaning it. Not once in 50 years of teaching. Every year, Mrs. McBloom's students yammered, Mrs. McBloom, clean up your classroom. For decades, Principal Pumpernickel pleaded, Mrs. McBloom, clean up your classroom. Twenty-two janitors came and went over the years. They all grumbled, Mrs. McBloom, clean up your classroom. Oh, higgly piggly, Mrs. McBloom would say, it's on my to-do list. Truth is, it had been on her to-do list for nearly 45 years. See, it's listed here, right above Take a Fancy Smancy Cruise. Room 5 hadn't always been an eye-poppin', heart-stompin' disaster. When Mrs. McBloom first started teaching, long before that Armstrong fella set his tootsies on the moon, it looked like this. Round about the time Pr Principal Pumpernickel was a little nipper in her classroom, it looked like this. Now, one week before Mrs. McBloom was fixin' to retire, her room looked like this. Giant sunflowers drooped over desks like decorative lamps. Tangly vines with fat green beans climbed the walls, and a genuine full-grown ruby red apple tree grew smack dab in the middle of her classroom. Years of science experiments had left all kinds of critters hopping and clucking and flying around room five. Chickens laid eggs in the coat cubbies. Butterflies fluttered back and forth between children's heads and pencil erasers. There were more books stacked in Mrs. McBloom's room than there were in the entire Up Yonder library. And you can bet your uncle's monkey that there were more piles of paper crammed into room five than there were in the entire up yonder paper airplane factory down the road. Now something drastic had to be done right quick. Sweet young Miss Bumblesprout was preparing to take Mrs. McBloom's place in the fall. Miss Bumblesprout fretted, Mrs. McBloom, clean up your classroom, pretty please. Oh, higgly piggly, sighed Mrs. McBloom, scratching her beehive hairdo. I've backed myself into a pickle. How am I ever going to get this room cleaned up in a jiffy? The rooster perched on the piano, belted out a hearty cock-a-doodle-doo. That's a humdinger of an idea, Rudy. Much obliged, said Miss, Miss McBloom. Miss McBloom moved a cluster of frogs aside and wrote an assignment on the board. Homework. Come up with an idea to get room five tidy, lickety-split. Be creative, stretch your imagination, use your noggin, anything goes. By the end of the following week, the whole class was busting with excitement. One by one, kids came to the front of the room, just past the mushroom patch, but before the mountain of unclaimed mittens and gym sneakers to share their ideas. Sam Wigglesworth had invented a super-duper picker-upper thingamabob. It can pick up from 0 to 10 in 60 seconds. Lily Lumpkin suggested Mrs. McBloom hire a magician. Then abracadabra, everything will disappear. Cooper Butterbaker brought in a herd of hungry goats from his daddy's farm to demonstrate their voracious appetites. They once ate a rusty pickup truck in three hours flat. On and on, the ideas kept coming. Mrs. McBloom recorded them on the chalkboard. Georgia Peach Pit was the last student to raise her hand. She stepped over the world globe, shooed Cooper's goats, and unrolled a colorful poster. <gasps> By Georgia, that's it, hollered Mrs. McBloom. A dilly of an idea. 
help Mrs. McBloom clean up her room day. All of Up Yonder is invited Saturday at 10 a.m. If each citizen shows up to remove one item, room five will be tidy lickety split. Free eggs and apples to everyone who helps. Word of help Mrs. McBloom clean up her room day spread through the town faster than Corky Redmond's chicken pox in the spring of 99. Seeing as nearly every citizen of Up Yonder had been a student of Mrs. McBloom's at one time or another, the whole town showed up to help on Saturday. A line loop-de-loop -loop through the halls, out the door, down the hill, and past the water tower. Single file, folks moseyed through room five, picked up one item, and moved on. The Up Yonder Kazoo Band provided live entertainment. The PTA passed out free refreshments, and Mrs. McBloom got to personally shake hands with all her former students. She bawled like a baby in wet britches. Heavens to belly buttons, the treasures pulled from the rubble were astounding. Long lost works of art, important historical documents, and rare geological finds were rediscovered. The Up Yonder Parade of Pickers went on plucking for hours. Among other things, they fished out four feathered quill pens, a pot-bellied stove, three buffalo nickels, a postcard signed by President Roosevelt, 13 petrified cupcakes, a poodle skirt, a howdy-doody coffee mug, a litter of kittens, a rotary dial telephone, and a flag with only 48 stars. Clay Potter found his library book. It was 35 years overdue. Fanny Freckle found her Elvis Presley lunchbox. Her lunch was still in it. P.U. After 20 years without them, Billy Brownbuckle finally got his eyeglasses back. <gasps> it's a miracle! I can see! By sundown, room 5 was completely cleaned out. The apple tree was replanted next to the playground and dedicated to Mrs. McBloom. Principal Puppernickel awarded Georgia the prestigious Knickerbocker Whippersnapper Award for Excellence. <clears throat> Splendid use of your noggin, Miss Peachpick. Thank you, sir. All in all, it was a mighty fine day for all the good folks of up yonder. In the days that followed, the town held the granddaddy of all yard sales and sold all the knickernacks, critters, and whatnots that had been uncovered from room five. The money raised was used to send Mrs. McBloom on a fancy smancy cruise. Oh, higgly piggly, bless your hearts. Bon voyage. As for sweet young Miss Bumblesprout, she began her teaching career that fall in a gussied up spiffied up tidy room five good morning class open your science books today we're going to plant pumpkin seeds i hope you enjoyed this story